Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthfication Chronicles, and I want to give you a little bit of a view of Pete Buttigieg that you're not going to get anywhere else, okay? Because Pete Buttigieg is from this area, northern Indiana, and I'm pretty familiar with the South Bend area, plus there are some other people who are very knowledgeable about him in this area. And we've been watching what he's done for the last few years. So, this one I thought was a very interesting perspective. This is from Benjamin Studebaker. Now, if you know anything about cars, you probably have heard of a Studebaker before. And South Bend was the home of the Studebaker factory where they made those cars. Studebaker is kind of like the heart of South Bend, really. And when Studebaker went out, that caused a big problem with South Bend, and we had empty factories for years sitting there and doing nothing. So this is a very interesting perspective because this is one of the Studebakers who wrote this, Benjamin Studebaker. Let a Studebaker tell you what's wrong with the mayor of South Bend. My name is Benjamin Studebaker, and I grew up in Indiana. I am not happy with the way the press is covering Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Let me tell you why. And there's one of the Studebakers right there, in one of the factories. Long ago, our family made wagons. When folks wanted those wagons horseless, we started putting engines in them. We built these horseless wagons at a factory in South Bend, Indiana. We shipped them out on rail lines, both east and west. We started up in 1852, and operations wound down at the South Bend plant in 1963. At one point, we employed more than 45,000 people. In the Studebaker century, South Bend became a city. And here's a graph that shows South Bend population in the Studebaker era, so you can see how it had a nice upward slant and everything up to 1960. We were first by far with a post-war car. We were the big new choice in the low price field. We were different by design. We made beautiful things. And there's another one of them right there. Most importantly, we offered the best wages and pensions in the industry with nary a strike at the South Bend plant until we were on our last legs in 1962. United Auto Workers came to us first and used the favorable terms they'd get from Studebaker to negotiate better deals for workers at GM, Ford, and Chrysler plants too. But we never had their size or production capacity and as the big three used their market share to push prices down to a level too low for us to manage. We were pushed out of the low price field, and then we were pushed out of the sports car market too. In the decades following the collapse of Studebaker, South Bend lost 30,000 residents. I mean, this is pretty significant here. Look at how it went down. And this is up to 2017 right there. Now, Pete came in about 2012 I think and so right in here is where he was it kind of stayed level up just a very little tad the press acts as if Pete Buttigieg has done something to revive this city but as you can see the population remains largely unchanged from when he took office in 2012 an immense amount of poverty and misery continues to grip the city in comparison to its county, its state, and to the country. And you can see here in this graph, you have South Bend. This is the poverty rate. St. Joe County is the county that South Bend is in. And as a whole, you can see South Bend is much higher poverty rate than the county as a whole. Indiana itself, less yet. And we're about equal to what it is across the United States. Hmm. Very interesting, huh? Even those above the poverty threshold earn poorly in comparison with everywhere else. And this is your median household income. Look at it. South Bend, way down here. St. Joseph County, the county as a whole. Indiana, and then the USA. Look at that. Between here and the USA itself, the entire U.S. Look at the difference. I mean, that's huge. It really is huge. 
In his book, Buddha Judge derides the moribund Studebaker corridor, promising to make South Bend into a silicone prairie with data centers and startups. But despite seven years in power, there are relatively few such jobs in the city. Only 1.5% of South Bend's jobs are in the computer and mathematical sector, and the occupation is listed as one of South Bend's least specialized, meaning that it has dramatically fewer workers in this sector than in most places in America. Instead, the city has increasingly become an appendage of Notre Dame, a wealthy Catholic private university. The people who once upon a time might have worked good union jobs at Studebaker now work increasingly in the food and serving sector, whipping up fancy coffees and craft booze for the rich kids. It's not only one of the city's five biggest sectors, unlike computer and mathematical, food and serving is a South Bend specialty. The median person employed in this sector is paid $13,400 per year. Another heavy hitter is the large and specialized health care and social assistance industry, which pays a marginally better $25,612. Poverty and low incomes push residents into crime. A resident of South Bend is more than three times more likely to be murdered than the average American twice as likely to be raped, and three times more likely to be robbed or assaulted. In the years Buddha Judge has been in power, the public schools have continued to lag behind Indiana averages in reading and science, pushing a whole new generation of residents into poverty, low-wage, unemployment, and criminality. Look at the student proficiency. In reading, the blue here is South Bend, the orange is Indiana. Huh. Look at that. And in science, same thing. This is South Bend, and this is overall in Indiana. Not great. The educational gaps are heavily racialized. 75% of white students are proficient in reading compared to 46% of black students, while 71% of white students are proficient in science compared to just 29% of their black counterparts. All races, however, put up inferior numbers in both subjects in comparison with your average Hoosier kid. The local newspaper, the South Bend Tribune, reports the schools get F ratings by Indiana standards. And, as we all know, Indiana's public schools aren't anything to run home about. The state spends less per pupil than all of its neighbors, including Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, and even Kentucky. But... As a teacher here, I'm going to say that doesn't necessarily mean the quality of instruction is worse, okay? How much you spend per pupil really is not a good measure of how good the education is at that school. I'm just saying, okay? Studebaker created jobs for ordinary people. What has Pete Buttigieg done for the poor and working people of South Bend? The numbers suggest he hasn't done anything. What he has done is threaten low-income homeowners with financial penalties if they don't make their homes prettier in a bid to push up land values and gentrify the city. If they couldn't pay, Buttigieg seized their homes and ripped them down. But don't take my word for it. Here's how the Indianapolis Star describes it. By leveling fees and fines, the city leaned on homeowners to make repairs or have their houses demolished. In many cases, Buttigieg said, the homeowners proved impossible to find amid a string of active and inactive investment companies. In other cases, he said, they were unwilling or unable to make repairs. Studebaker gave South Bend's workers jobs. Buttigieg took their homes. Studebaker hired South Bend's workers to make cars for ordinary Americans. Buttigieg wants to hire them to make lattes for rich kids. The Americans who need a big new choice in the low price field won't find a friend in Buttigieg. He's not different by design. He's just another Ivy League McKenzie consultant looking to find ways to make the world a little bit better for rich folks and a little bit worse for everyone else. But the Coasty Press doesn't talk to the people who lost their homes because Buddha Judge doesn't think they're pretty enough. Instead, it just keeps reporting on how smart he is and how many languages he speaks. Buddha Judge doesn't give a darn about people, and neither do they. 
The Studebaker family is big, and I don't speak for all of it, but in my view, he's not curing South Bend of its sickness. He embodies the rot. Notre Dame gets bigger, and the ordinary people who built the city are forgotten. It's not good for South Bend, and it wouldn't be good for the country. Yep, Studebaker. So I thought that was a very interesting read there. I'll put the links down below as usual so you can read through it on your own and pass it around. Here's another article that I thought was kind of insightful because this is, you know, what's happening in South Bend. And I will tell you, you know, I watch the South Bend News a lot and I read the South Bend Tribune. There's a lot of crime going on up there. <laughs> And we don't normally spend a lot of time in South Bend. We go, sometimes we have to go for doctor's appointments or whatever, but we just don't go there much because it can be kind of dangerous in some places. And there's really not that big of an appeal for me. There's not that many things going on, in my opinion. I'm not a big city person, okay? And even though South Bend only has about 100,000 people, to me, that's big. And I'm just not into that kind of thing. So... You know, I've been up there, I've been to different activities, and it's nice to be able to do that, but for the most part, I'm glad I live where I live. Notice what this says. Mayor Buttigieg runs for president while his city bleeds. What the media isn't reporting about a 2020 candidate from a failed city. This is a caricature of him. Yeah, look at the ears. So, this is kind of interesting. This guy talks more about some of the crime that goes on. On March 31st, a South Bend grandma brought her grandson to the hospital. The 11-month-old baby boy had been shot. His grandmother's car had also taken fire. It was another early morning in South Bend. Around the same time, Mayor Buttigieg was toting up the $7 million in donations from his charm offensive. As his bid for the 2020 Democrat nomination got underway, the national media never bothered reporting the shooting of an 11-month-old boy in the city he was supposed to be running but instead confined its coverage of South Bend matters to a publicity stunt wedding officiated by Buttigieg. It goes on here. The horrifying shooting of an 11-month-old on the millennial mayor's watch was not an unusual incident. In the last few days, even as the media was gushing over Buttigieg's presidential ambitions, two Indiana University South Bend players were injured in a shooting on Notre Dame Avenue. A blind date ended in a shooting, and yet another shooting added to the bloody toll in the real South Bend. Those are quite a few shootings for a city of barely 100,000 people, but South Bend is a violent place. Look at what this says. While Chicago is notorious for its murder rate, in 2015, Buttigieg's South Bend actually topped Chicago's 16.4 homicides per 100,000 people, with a homicide rate of 16.79 per 100,000 people. Those numbers put Mayor Pete Buttigieg's city on the list of the top 30 murder capitals in the country for the year. Oh, I'm telling you, it really is kind of crazy. And that surprised me immensely when I read this because I didn't think it was worse than Chicago, but evidently it was right there in 2015. Hmm pretty bad. And then it goes on. He lists uh, several others and some of the things that are going on and they just start covering it outside of South Bend. I mean, obviously these things are put on the South Bend news and in the South Bend Tribune, but they're not put out there in the national coverage. People need to know what Pete Buttigieg's city is like, really, for real people. But instead, this is not what they're looking at. And the reason they're not looking at it is because, you know, he looks good, he talks good, and, well, gosh darn, he's just doing all those things that are so good for the country, you know, so good for the environment. You know, he has a bike thing that he's doing, a bike program, and he's got outdoor concerts going on downtown, and there's just all kinds of things for you to do in South Bend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's what they're they're calling a trendy community outreach strategy to gang members. <laughs> yeah, trendy. And it's just, I mean, he makes it look good, but 
it's not accomplishing anything. And the high poverty rate, it, it's just crazy how bad it is. And so this article gives a lot of very interesting things. Uh, one of the points that they make right here is that he's kind of boasting that he won re-election by 80%. He had 80% of the vote. Well, it's a Democrat county. It always goes blue. <laughs> uh, it just always does. And look at this. There was only 8,515 8, votes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was it. I mean, it doesn't even mention that it was such a small portion of the number of people there. And it just is something he spent a lot of money. And of course, Kelly Jones spent only $584. So, you know, I understand that the Republicans aren't going to put a whole lot into the campaign because it is a blue county. I mean, it always goes blue. But I will tell you that with Trump, he only lost by about 50 votes, maybe even less than that in South Bend, well, in St. Joan County. So yeah, it was really close. And that was quite surprising to me when I looked at those numbers. But anyway, so this is just one of those things. This guy really kind of says it all here and puts down some pretty interesting statistics. And up here it says, the media keeps touting Buttigieg's Ivy League credentials, his identity as a gay politician, and his charm. When it mentions South Bend, it's only to claim that he turned it around and that he won his last election by 80%. South Bend hasn't been turned around. Downtown has gotten a hipster revamp, while the rest of South Bend chokes on crime, violence, and misery. But Buttigieg knows that the national media will never bother doing more than reporting on new bike paths and an organic grocery. The 11-month-old boy who came into the hospital with a wound in his shoulder won't catch their eye. But as Mayor Buttigieg keeps raising money hand over fist, South Bend continues to bleed and die. And Buttigieg is hoping that he can sneak into the White House before the blood gets on his hands. Yeah, quite an eye-opening article here, by the way. And just to give you a little more perspective on this, I wanted to show you this data here. Yeah, here's South Bend on the left, and you have the population and everything, and the median household income, 35000 Check out over here for the entire United States, 57000 The poverty rate, 267 for South Bend, but it's 14% across the United States. So, you know, granted, it doesn't cost as much to live here. The cost of living is pretty low, but it... You know, this is kind of surprising to me that there is so much of a difference between what it is across the United States and then what it is around here, too. So, you know, interesting to see. So that's what I've got for you on this one. And I just wanted to let you know some of these things about Pete Buttigieg and South Bend, the city he's been mayor of for the last several years. So I think he does have a track record that we need to be aware of. And it's not great. So anyway, share this. Make sure people understand just who Pete Buttigieg is because he's becoming more and more popular and he's getting on more TV shows. Anyway, I want to thank you for stopping by. And if you could, if you're not subscribed, please click the subscribe button. And if you have, subs <clears throat> and if you have subscribed before, please make sure that you check it because some people have been taken off the list. I just want to make sure that if you want to be one of my subscribers that you get a chance to do that. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see y'all later. Bye.